Josh, why do you talk about climate change on a financial planning YouTube channel? Well, I'm actually surprised I have to point this out, to be perfectly honest with you, because it seems if you read, if you watch my videos and read my blogs and my books, and you know, I'm assuming you have done that. If you haven't, that's fine. That's why I'm doing this video. You'll see I have one, I maintain one idea throughout that you don't need to be as fearful as what we've been led to believe. You don't. The fear-mongering approach needs to be destroyed. And I'm not saying once and for all, because there are times when it makes sense to be fear. And that's why I have some gold. That's why I have some cash, because there is a reason to be fearful sometimes, for sure. But how you act regarding that fear, in terms of what risk you take to hedge against that fear, well, this is where I think financial planners screw this up royally, and certainly with the financial media. Because what they do is they'll say... You can't retire because of these sequence of return risks and stuff like that. That's just, that's just silly on its face. The sequence of return risk did not stop people from retiring if they had taken necessary precautionary measures, i.e. the barbell approach. But the other thing is you can't retire unless you have $1.7 million. Well, that, see, that's two different, two different things. It's both the same premise. You can't retire because of... But one premise is actually, you can actually uh, deal with that risk quite simply, just through some good old fashioned diversification. The other one, diversification, you can't deal with it because it's a fundamental discussion that says you can't retire because you don't have enough money. And so then people could stay in their crappy little jobs, biding their time, miserable, miserable, getting worse and worse shape physically. They think they're getting better shape financially. But they're not going to be better shape financially because at the end of the day, retirement is contingent on your personal health. And if your health is poor because you're grinding away at a desk, eating donuts in the morning, fast food in the afternoon, and taking takeout in the evening, not getting exercise, not taking some time to get you energized in your brain, you're not going to be around to enjoy the fruits of your labor. So that's my fundamental, the fundamental reason I started the whole thing was because I'm tired of the fear mongering because it's nuts. Fear mongering relative to sequence of return risk can be dealt with easily. Fear mongering when it comes to your inability to retire because you don't have enough money, that's, that's fundamental, that's structural. I cannot change that uh, by simply saying you need to save more because we're going into it with a false premise. It's kind of like the false premise that I talk about all the time about Mitch McConnell wants to reduce social security. I mean, if you're on the side of the right, you can't even grant that premise because it's so stupid, it's dumb. Mitch McConnell, it's just as dumb. So I don't even want to debate that because on his face, it's stupid. So to grant that premise to say, Mitch McConnell doesn't want to reduce social security, let me show you why, you've already lost the argument. Or to say, everyone who voted for Trump is a white nationalist, you can't, I mean, just as stupid. You're sitting saying, as we, as they've done in the past, many whites, some of my best friends are black. No, you just can't, you can't grant the premise. You say, hey, whatever. If someone's going to say that, they're not, look, they're not playing by the rules, which is to say, I am trying to have a discussion with you as a human being to a human being. They're not playing by that rule. And so you can't play. Just don't play. That's the whole point. Don't even get involved in those games with people being that stupid. All right, so what does this have to do with climate change? Because it's fear mongering. You, what your life is going to ruin the planet and kill people is the fear mongering that these people say. How you live your life is doing uh, climate, environmental degra degradation of unseen proportions is what you're going to hear, is what they say. And the reality of that, that is just absolutely absurd on the beginning. Absolutely absurd on the beginning. You shouldn't ever, ever grant that premise because it's stupid. Now, what I would say is, to violate what I just said, oh, if that were to be so, me, because see what happens is these negative Nellies, these naysayers, these doomsdayers, they always say, we, like the society, the society is destroying X, Y, Z. Well, what exactly is society? It's a number of individual human beings making decisions how to live their life. Hundreds of decisions, if not thousands a day. 
I went for his walk today, could have showered first, done some videos. I said, eh, we'll just go for a walk. It's nice out, 70 degrees, probably 65, got a nice cool breeze. Fall feels like it's finally here, feels good. So you see, I'm not sweating like I normally do, but you can all see I haven't showered yet. Oh no, I'm not that looking that presentable. Climate change doomsdayers. And when I say, okay, so what are you going to do about it? Because it's never them specifically, it's always society. So you can say all day long, CO2 is bad, all right? And CO2 is causing environmental degradation. CO2 is going to lead to global warming. It's going to make the Arctic melt. It's going to put Martha Vineyard and Obama underwater. We never said that. Yes, you guys have. You have said that. Time and time again, you've said this stuff. And time and time again, you've been wrong. But you, I'll even grant you the premise. What are you going to do about it? I ask that specifically to you. Don't tell me we need the Paris Accord or Kyoto or whatever these things are anymore. Don't tell me we need the IPCC. What are you going to do if CO2 is the boogeyman that you're claiming? It's, see, that's the thing. Nothing. We still have Michael Mann flying all over the world with his fake hockey stick thing, which is why I posted yesterday how he lost again in a Canadian court, not an American court, a Canadian court, when he tried to sue for slander. And they lost. They said, show us your research. And just like the high to the climb people, Phil Jones of the East Anglia Climate Research Unit. Nah, they're fake, fakery, fake news. He did not produce his research to show us the hockey stick. He did not. And thus, they threw out his lawsuit against uh, uh, Tim Ball. Because Tim Ball says, you're a faker. He says, I'm suing you for libel or slander or whatever. I don't even know what it is. Tim Ball says, okay, show us your research. Uh, yeah, and he would. he just took his doggone sweet time. Now, he's over two now. Now he's got Mark Stein coming up next. And he'll lose that most likely unless he gets a, you know, a, whatever, a Justin Trudeau appointed judge. I don't know how it works in Canada. But now that he's over two, it's going to be awful tough for Mark Stein to lose that. Actually, I think Mark Stein might be in America. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, Mark Stein will win. So Michael Mann now is out probably $8 million bucks because of he had to pay for the, the law firm to represent Tim Ball. So Michael Mann sued Tim Ball. The court said, all right, well, Tim Ball is accusing you of fakery. Michael Mann said, it's bullcrap, judge. But the judge says, rightly, well, let's see your work. Michael Mann says, uh, yeah. And he dragged, dragged. Years went by. Eight years went by. Dragged and finally the judge said, I got to throw this out. And you're going to pay the fees for Tim Ball's team. That's a lot of money, my friends. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, the climate doomsdayers will sit there and say, uh, they can say all they want. Well, you're acknowledging, you're ignoring the truth. You're a Pollyanna. You know, don't you, or you're ignorant. This is what they always say. You're ignorant. You don't know what you're talking about. I just sit there and say, I, I mean, look, they, they can say whatever. They, I frankly don't care. It's silly. The fact that you're saying I'm ignorant about this, uh, i.e. ignorant means you don't know. Now, a lot of these guys are going to say, well, I don't agree. Thus, you don't know because I don't agree with your take, but I'm not ignorant about the climate change debate. I'm not. I'm not ignorant about CO2. We know it's about 400 parts per million. We know it used to not be. We also know that for a fact, for a fact, the world is getting greener. We know that. We can debate whether some warming or not. It might be a little bit. The oceans have risen a little bit, not much. We're talking literally centimeters. So the industrial age, which has done wonderful things for humanity, Oh, look at that pretty dog. Hey, puppy. Um, the idea that the industrial age is leading to our decline, it's just, it's silly on its face. And those who say that would need to prove, all right? How is CO2, because that's always their boogeyman, how is CO2 causing it? Now, you think about it like this, which has always kind of cracked me up. So, yeah, water vapor is a vast majority of greenhouse gases. So that's what, absolutely. You got methane, which is much, much higher than CO2, and then you got CO2. All right, so we got, let's just, so Al Gore did not use water vapor in his stupid thing, Inconvenient Truth. You go, huh? But think about this. Let's just say more evaporation because we have warmer temperatures. More evaporation leads to what? It leads to more water vapor, right? So inherently, that might say it's going to be hotter. But what also does it lead to? More clouds for rain. What do clouds do? They uh, shield some of the earth from the sun rays. I mean, it's just, this is basic stuff. To say, oh, you're ignorant. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. And then we got to sit there and say, is CO2 carbon dioxide the cause of this? And let's just say it is. 
say it's a cause of global warming. We can argue, and I think it's right, we can say, is NASA and NOAA, and with the other one, Boulder, are they absolutely giving us a fair shake on their global temperatures? The answer is no, we know that for a fact. You just look at Argentina, Buenos Aires, they got three main temperatures, thermometers. Two are in the rural areas, one is in right downtown, in the, uh, sitting on some asphalt. The one sitting on asphalt is so much higher than the two in the rural areas that they homogenize it, and the one in the asphalt brings the two other up and it makes it look like the temperature's gone up. But it has it for the rural ones, it only has for the homogenized one. But because it's so much higher than the other ones, because it's literally sitting on asphalt, uh, brings the other twos up. You can look, man. But again, I'm ignorant of this. It's just silly. It's emba I'm embarrassed for people who say that. Man, you might be able to state your argument. Some guy said you're naive. Well, I'm not naive. Just because I don't agree with you doesn't make me naive, and it certainly doesn't make me ignorant. It's just, it's, I mean, just stop with that. The whole appeal to authority thing. Oh, it just drives me up the wall. I'm listening right now to a podcast but LTCM, Long-Term Capital Management, uh, and they had uh, almost taken down the market. Some uh, you know, highly prized fighting economists, Nobel Prize and all this stuff, uh, doing their derivative trading in 1998. I remember this too. And when Russia devalued their currency, uh, LTCM, which was highly leveraged, 30 to one, they, they went kaput, zero, because they did not have the funds uh, to make good on their debts because they're so highly leveraged and that's where leverage can hurt you and uh, funny some of the, the the people who are defending ltcm said they could have never predicted russia devaluing it's like yeah you think your <laughs> your algorithms and your trade theory and your capital asset pricing management and uh, capm your black shoals investment options structure all that stuff it's all academic but human beings are not academic Human beings make decisions every single day that affects everything. And so to sit there and say, well, they couldn't have predicted that. Yeah, no S, Sherlock. They couldn't have, which is why their whole algorithm is silly to begin with. Because in a vacuum, it works like a charm. We don't live in vacuum. Same thing with CO2. In a vacuum, you could probably make a case that CO2 could be leading to greenhouse gases, or not greenhouse gases, but global warming temperatures. But we don't have that, do we? Why? Because there's so many other strings that gotta be pulled. But even if, even if it did, even if it did, then you gotta make the argument, is that a bad thing? All right, so let's just say have some global warming. Is that a bad thing? Because we know we have a greener country, a world right now, for sure. Uh, more moisture, actually. What does more moisture do? Does it lead to hotter temperatures and droughts or lower temperatures uh, and less droughts? And you can even say maybe some flooding. Well, at least the lower temperatures. If we look historically, the droughts are what is led by high temperatures. All right, that's, I mean, just look at what happened in the 1930s. What caused the droughts? Well, it was a huge high temperatures. And you, again, you might not want to uh, hear this. You might say, oh, that's ignorance, naivety, or, or what is the other one? You're a flat earther, but it still stands to reason that you have to say, huh, maybe I'm the one who's, not listening to the other side. I'm the one being you. But even that goes back down. So what are you going to do? You, not society, not Obama, but Joe Schmo, the fear monger. What are you going to do if CO2 is a problem? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to get my Toyota Prius. That's not enough. That doesn't do crap. It still has to be, uh, the battery still has to get filled up with electricity. It's still better. It's so one way to the right direction, but it still isn't going to solve it. You have to stop all your CO2 consumption. Or, or you're using things that allow for more CO2 to be emitted. You can't take. You cannot take airplanes. I say this time and again, and everyone sits there and says, well, should we do something? Well, what are you going to do? Yes, we should do something. What? The biggest cause of CO2 emissions is airplanes and ships. You can't get on a cruise. You can't take planes. I don't get why this is so hard. And people get so offended by this. Like, oh, well, uh, you can't, uh, I, I still want to live in the West. Well, no crap. Don't we all? You can't live in the West and take planes. And then still at the same time say CO2 is a problem. You can't do that. It's not just hypocrisy, it's downright dangerous. Because what you're actually saying is, you want natural gas pipelines to not be there because you're an enemy of fossil fuels. And yet here's Bernie Sanders. 
we're going to put fossil fuels executives in jail as he's flying around the world campaigning and raising money. You can't do that. I'm t- it's like I used an example yesterday. All right, we're drunk driver. We know drunk driving leads to death. So we're going to stop drunk driving, but we're going to ban it. But only after I have a couple more beers and I get on the road. Does that make any sense? No. So we're going to say, yeah, CO2 is going to lead to unseen deaths, horrible destruction. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I don't know, mandate that we don't have CO2, but I'm still going to fly around. You can't do that. I mean, you can, but you're a freaking hypocrite and you don't believe you're not eating your own cooking. That's what ticks me off the most. The biggest purveyors of CO2 myth are usually the ones who are flying around all over the world. As, you know, this whole thing with what's the name, Megan, whatever name it is, and Prince Andrew, Harry, Charles, all these guys are hypocrites. But I get tired of hip- just calling them hypocrites. That's evil stuff there, man. Telling Indians and Chinese who've been living on no money for years, no electricity, that they can't have the bounties of what fossil fuels are. That's nuts. And so because I say, you know, basically, screw you guys. Well, well, we're just going to, we'll make it so we don't have fossil fuels. Uh-oh, what's going on up here? Yikes. Looks like uh, something happened. Looks like a dog is running in the street here. Oops. Oh, boy. Is he going to come after me because I'm by myself here? Hang on a sec. Aw, puppy. There he goes. Go on the side. Hope he doesn't come get me. That's a big old cute little dog, but we shall see. The traffic is stopped. Uh-oh, he's looking at me. I don't think he's trying to get me. He's walking away. All right, well, we'll let you guys go because I'm going to see what's going on here. I right, see you.